This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with mindfulness teacher Kelly Hanlon McCormick. And today is episode number 269, the one about overwhelm. My intention for this conversation is that we have a moment together to understand overwhelm and know what to look for instead of always just being taken out by it. This is an important one. Welcome in. It's the Transforming Anxiety Podcast, episode number 269, the one about overwhelm. I'm so glad you're here. Hey there, welcome in today. All right, so some of you have kids and families that have already headed back to school, right? Some of you are gearing up for that shift and are just about to send your people back to school. Some of you... I know our educators or our staff in the educational system, so you too are heading back to work and daily routine and structure. And for all of us, almost no matter what, there is this shift as we welcome the change in seasons and the start of a new school year because it's just so ingrained in us, that whole back to school feeling from years in the school system ourselves, right? Some of you are just antsy for fall (laughs) and pumpkin spice and boots and crunchy leaves, and I get that too. But wherever you are, wherever this conversation finds you, the truth is things are about to shift. Summer's coming to a close, fall is going to be upon us, and the days are getting shorter, at least here in the northern hemisphere. The cooler weather is hopefully eventually coming our way. And we need to prepare ourselves a bit for this change because, you know, it's here anyway. We might as well flow with it instead of arguing against it. Yeah. So I thought today we would dig into overwhelm in the hopes that we can be ready for it and that we can look for signs of it in the hopes that we can notice it when it shows up and take care of ourselves around it. So I'm going to pull from a lot of mindfulness teachers today and what I'm talking about and talking through, and we're going to revisit some of the teachings from some of the greats um, on this topic. So we'll talk a bit about stress and overwhelm and, as always, anxiety. So I thought today we would start by looking at the definition of overwhelm. I feel like we haven't consulted the dictionary lately, so we're just going to start there with just the straight up definition of overwhelm. And listen, I'm not sure what I thought I was going to find here, but this one surprised me a little bit. The definition of overwhelm is to bury or drown beneath a huge mass. (laughs) I mean, that's relatable, right? If you're feeling overwhelmed, the emotion of overwhelm, it kind of feels like the very definition in the dictionary, right? You're being buried or drowned beneath a huge mass. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah. Another definition of overwhelm is to defeat completely. I mean, the hits just keep coming, right? Because, uh huh, <laughs> there are times we just feel completely defeated. Oh, yeah. I also checked out some synonyms because the the, uh, resources were just hitting it on all levels. So what else does overwhelm mean to us? Like, what other words do we use? Things like swamp, engulf, deluge, flood, inundate, overload, overburden. Pretty spot on. Yeah, this is the felt sense, right? The experience of being overwhelmed. Yes. So I want to pause here for a second and juxtapose this with stress. We talked about stress, oh, whenever that was, recently here together. And stress is like, well, this isn't good, (laughs) right? In comparison, stress is like, I'm feeling pressure, I'm under the gun. Maybe I don't feel like I'm in flow. I don't feel comfortable. I'm a bit tense right now. Stress is like 
I'm really busy because I have three burners going on the stove, a kid asking me for help with their homework, and a phone that won't stop ringing. Stress is a project that's due tomorrow that you're feeling only so-so about, right? That's stress. Overwhelm, on the other hand, is like, I cannot make dinner. I cannot hold a conversation. I cannot even think about doing laundry. Overwhelm is my stomach hurts and I can't breathe and there's no way I could help you with anything right now. Overwhelm is way past the point of managing and handling the balls in the air. It's the point where you let all the balls come crashing down because you are well and truly past any capacity to do a good job, let alone care about the little things you can usually do or care about in any given moment. Overwhelm is when you need a timeout, when you need to walk away, When you need to consciously breathe because there is literally no other option. So I want to really highlight that overwhelm, it's not good. I feel like we talk about overwhelm and we feel overwhelmed and we treat it like it's some kind of thing we should expect and anticipate coming our way. Like it's just ordinary. But overwhelm should not be ordinary. This is not a pedestrian experience. It's not good. So, like, how about this? Here's what John Kabat-Zinn says about overwhelm. He wrote, Our lives are somehow unfolding faster than the human nervous system and psyche are able to manage well. Okay, think about this. Our lives are unfolding faster than our bodies can process. We are flooded by life and it's just crashing over us because our nervous systems cannot keep up. Yeah? Yeah, that is overwhelm. You're on the verge of not being able to function when you're overwhelmed. You are not grounded You don't feel like you're well-resourced. Remember that conveyor belt of chocolate in the the I Love Lucy episode, right? It was just more and more and more. If you're too young for that, YouTube it. I'm sure that exists out there somewhere so that you get the visual. But it's like there's just more and more. There's no slowing down. There's no way to handle what's coming at you because you don't have the skills or the tools or the time or the energy or the emotional capacity, or something to deal with it. All right, let's just take a deep breath here. (laughs) Sometimes even talking about this can summon up little hints of what it feels like, right, to be overwhelmed. So, okay, this is from Brene Brown's book, Atlas of the Heart. She wrote this. Researcher Carol Gohm used the term overwhelmed to describe an experience where our emotions are intense, our focus on them is moderate, and our clarity about exactly what we're feeling is low enough that we get confused when trying to identify or describe the emotions. In other words, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm feeling my emotions at about 10, I'm paying attention to them at about 5, and I understand them at about 2. I think this is a really critical part of this that I just want to hit again here. When you're overwhelmed, you're not in a place to handle things. I think a lot of times we think we should be able to get through a day like we're always well rested and feeling good and things are going easily, right? That emotionally and mentally we're just feeling spacious, we're solid, but that isn't the case. Sometimes the smallest things are what send us over the edge into sheer overwhelm because we aren't at all well rested or feeling good and things are actually enormously difficult. So yeah, then we lose it when something really small happens and we wonder and the people around us may wonder what the heck is going on because on another day in another situation with other context we would be able to handle whatever's happening with no problem. 
So I'm bringing this up now. I wanted to have this conversation with you at this point in the year because we're heading into the school year. We're getting back to routine and schedules and regular kid activities and homework. And then there are going to be the holidays. And well, I think this is something that if we could take a look at it together now from here, when we're maybe not feeling overwhelmed, then we can maybe proactively take care of ourselves heading into it. And we can look for signs that we are getting overwhelmed. And maybe we can even look for ways to prevent it altogether. Yeah? So there are some things that we can do to proactively stave off overwhelm. And this is going to be unique to you. Things you can look for to take care of yourself. It's not necessarily the same across the board. And what I need may not be what you need where overwhelm is concerned. Yeah? But I'll give you some ideas anyway. (laughs) Okay? And then just make this yours. Take what works for you. Take what you relate to and resonate with. And then add to or delete, right, whatever you need for you. Some of this I do think is pretty universal, right? We're all individuals, but there are some things that are just human. Some things that humans just need to feel good and to be healthy. So like some obvious examples of that, getting enough sleep, staying hydrated, and regularly exercising. Again, basic foundational building blocks, but pretty much nothing else matters if this stuff isn't in place. Eat foods that work for your body. Again, what those foods are, that's unique to you, but it matters. Then there are things like knowing about yourself. Do you need a lot of downtime? Do you need a lot of solitude? If so, don't overschedule yourself. Don't cram your calendar full of social events. If you have a big work project or something you want to get done around the house, plan it out. Like procrastination is only useful to a point. This will come back to bite you in the form of overwhelm if you rely on it too much or regularly, right? More subtle but equally overwhelming things. Having to make too many decisions. Decision making is very expensive for our brains to do. It takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of effort. So we need to be mindful of that. And if you're in a decision-heavy situation, be gentle with yourself outside of that. Like if you're having to get a lot done and make a lot of decisions about a house project or a work project, maybe just order pizza tonight, right? Don't make another decision where dinner is concerned because you could get overwhelmed due to dinner, right? Something else that can lead to overwhelm is when you've got a lot going And none of it benefits each other. I know we've all had this experience too. Something like your kid needs help with homework and you have a work project going on, right? You have two things that need doing. Your kid doesn't care about work and work doesn't care about your kid, right? That's kind of a silly example, but you see what I mean. There are some things that move the whole greater good forward, like team family or team, you know, work department or something. But there are other things that are just so piecemeal that you have a lot to get done and nothing else on your plate is positively impacted by you working on one of those tasks. In fact, a lot of times when you're working on task A, that just takes away from time you could be spending on task B or C. So those tasks are actually negatively impacted by you focusing on task A. Does that make sense? All right, there's also a sense of having too many tabs open in your mind. You know what I mean? Like you have so many thoughts and you're just all over the place. You're ping-ponging back and forth. You can't focus on one thing for very long because you feel yanked over to another and then another and then another. So sometimes we have to close a few tabs in our minds. This could mean delegating things to other people, letting things go, Or just saying, not today, to a worry, to a thought, to a task. Something to pay attention to is, of course, where overwhelm pitfalls show up for you. What is it that overwhelms you? 
Where do you start spinning out? And again, this is kind of personal. It's kind of unique to you. The things that overwhelm me may not overwhelm you. Or something that overwhelms you this week may be totally fine for you to handle in a couple weeks. So we have to stay attuned to that inner experience and recognize the early red flags and the cues from our own minds and our own bodies that things are headed in the overwhelmed direction. So then look at what you do when you're feeling overwhelmed. How do you react? And I'm using the word react on purpose here and not the word respond (laughs) because we absolutely cannot respond when we're overwhelmed. There's nothing conscious or calm or deliberate about our approach when we're overwhelmed. We get very reactive. So what does your reactivity look like? Again, here's some examples. And these are real fun. (laughs) Reactivity is a real fun time. One is quick rising anger. Like if you are just hair trigger, that temper is like right there. Yelling, right? If you're really quick to snap, you feel just incredibly irritable about everything. That maybe there's a sense that you have little to no resilience and you cannot handle the ebbs and flows of life. Like any little rough patch sends you absolutely ballistic. Also, and this is kind of the opposite side of that same coin, if you completely retreat inside yourself, maybe you just shut down to the outside world. You feel frozen, you feel stuck, and either completely numb to emotion or totally flooded with emotion. Now, these are all signs that you're overwhelmed and your nervous system is not able to keep up with the unfolding of life as John Kabat-Zinn said so beautifully. To boil this down, all of this reactivity is a sign that your nervous system is, dis- is dysregulated, that your stress response has been activated and you're feeling bombarded by perceived threat, danger, by overwhelming emotion, and you're unable to process and manage things as they're coming your way. A lot of times we don't recognize this is happening until we are this reactive, until we're in it, until we see ourselves yelling or feeling frozen in the face of a decision or something similar, right? We don't recognize that we're overwhelmed basically until we notice our behavior, our words, or our actions. So surprise, surprise, you've heard me say this a million times. This is where self-awareness comes in. When you see yourself getting reactive, ask why. And listen, I'll be the first to admit, this can't happen in the moment, usually. You're not likely to get all reflective and quiet and curious while you're feeling like you could throw things and scream into a pillow. (laughs) But you can do this after the fact, and that's fine. That works too. You can say, whoa, what happened there? You can repair conversations if and where you need to, right? If you need to apologize for something you said or how you said something you said, repair after the fact matters. You don't always have to catch yourself in the midst of it. That's okay. We're human. But go back afterwards and say, huh, I think I was feeling overwhelmed. (laughs) I think that's what that was about. And own it with whoever you need to own it with. Hell, own it with yourself, right? Be willing to name it and see it for what it is. And then look at what led up to it. How did you get there? When, where, how, why did your nervous system get flooded? Reverse engineer it so that you can see what happened. This is one of those things to look for and know about yourself because Honestly, and not to be overly dramatic, this is not hyperbola. I do think this is true. You simply cannot live in overwhelm. It is not sustainable. There are other emotions, there are other experiences that you can flow in and out of. Overwhelm isn't one of them. It's not something that just dissipates and you can go on your merry way. This one takes a toll. 
This is where we start seeing things like your health, your sleep, your sense of balance and ease in the world. It all takes a huge hit and you borderline can't function and stay upright. This one is not a nice to have. It's quite critical, actually. Okay, one last note, one idea. Really, to be honest, the only idea for when you're feeling overwhelmed. This is all you need to do. Time out. That's it. You need some real, significant, non-doing time. No tasks, no chores, nothing productive. You cannot perform or get things done when you're overwhelmed. You need a break. And this is going to seem very counterintuitive. It's going to seem really tricky for some of you go, go, go types who are just obsessed with your to-do lists and productivity. But I can pretty much promise you when you're overwhelmed and when you are completely just bowled over, anything you're doing when you're in this state isn't going to go well. You're just not at your best. You're not able to be clear-headed. You're not able to have perspective. You're not able to do things as efficiently and cleanly as you normally would. So don't. Just don't do things when you're overwhelmed, which first saves you the struggle of having to do things again, since you're likely doing things from a totally jacked up, overactivated place. And it will give you the space and time and the break from the doing of things. All we do is do things. We've turned into human doings instead of human beings. You'll get back to doing things soon, I promise. But when you're overwhelmed, it is not the time to do more. It's just the opposite of what you need and what's useful and valuable. Now, if you need something to do, because I usually do, what you can do is walk. I actually think this is maybe why walks were invented. (laughs) Get outside. Get some fresh air. Go for a walk. Breathe. Look up. This is absolutely the antidote to overwhelm. Do nothing. No doing. Yes, walking. Right? Get outside and move. Quickest, cheapest, and most surefire fix to overwhelm. Now, it'll seem like you need to do more to knock down the to-do list and get out of overwhelm, but I promise you, I promise you, you cannot meaningfully function while you're overwhelmed. The best thing for you to do is nothing. Hold on, ride the wave, because it feels terrible, doesn't it, right? And when you're on the other side, You can start going and doing again. You'll be so much more effective for it. All right, that's it for today. But before I leave you, I want to let you know that my fall mindfulness class this year, it's called Be Mindful, Not Anxious. That class is going to be opening for enrollment very soon. So we will be together for six weeks It's only going to be $59 for the whole six weeks. You'll have practices and you're going to have meditations that you're going to get to keep and work with forever. Be mindful, not anxious. So we're going to start on Monday, September 16th, and I will have links and I will have more info for you soon, but I want you to be sure that you're on my email list so that you hear about that when it is open. So that's at kellyhanlonmccormick.com. And I will see you next week at the same time, same place for more transforming anxiety. And until then, please take care. Thank you so much for being here, for listening, for doing this work alongside me. Thank you for sharing this with your friends and your family, anyone who, you know, could use the support and the guidance who could use these teachings and practices. Thank you for sharing your stories with me, telling me about your experiences and asking your questions. I'm here with you. Let's do this together. 
transforming anxiety.